guys welcome back for part number two i think i will call it the once is it true once saved always saved or is it true once you've been saved can you use the salvation part number two so let's get right into it before we any further okay yes, oh let me pause right here um i'm just I'm going to listen to the whole clip again, but this is part number two. So what I have, what I have already um, talked about on part one, I'm not going to talk about it again in part number two. Let's go back. That's why I left Michigan, by the way. You left Michigan because of the predestination up there? No, because um, of your story earlier. Oh. Um, I just have a question. What's your I, name, by the way? Jane. Hey, Jane. I don't know if you can answer this or not, but like the friend from Michigan that you talked about, who was a Christian and then became atheist, uh -huh. mm -hmm. or some of the non the Christians who used to believe and now have gone a different path? Mm -hmm. Are they then once saved, always saved, or? I think if they were truly saved, Jesus says in John chapter five, "He who believes has passed from death into life." And that part I already covered in part number one. So if you want to know about that part, you can go um, up there. You're gonna see part number one. In other words, you get eternal life not when you die, you get it when you believe. And if by definition, life is eternal, you can't lose it. You can't lose your justification, you can lose your sanctification. What is justification? And also that part, oh, actually, yeah, it's also in part number one. Justification is instantaneous. Once you trust in Christ, your sins are forgiven. Sanctification is an ongoing process where hopefully you're getting closer and closer to becoming like Jesus. Okay? And to illustrate this, justification is like, it took one day to get Israel out of Egypt. But sanctification is, it took 40 years to get Egypt out of Israel. So justification is instantaneous. Sanctification goes up and down. You can lose your, fel your fellowship with, with Christ and still be saved. It could be, though, that if somebody says they've fallen away and they've denied Christ, it may be that you're getting point. closer and closer to becoming like Jesus. Okay? And to illustrate this, justification is like, it took one day to get Israel out of Egypt, but sanctification is, it took 40 years to get Egypt out of Israel. So justification is instantaneous. Sanctification goes up and down. You can lose your, fel your fellowship with, with Christ and still be saved. It could be, though, that if somebody says they've fallen away and they've denied Christ, that maybe they never tasted the gift spoken about in Hebrews. They never really were a Christian. They just said they were and they weren't. You don't know. Only God knows. Thank Thanks, Jane. Okay. You see... That's even more of a prominent way to believe that you cannot always be saved even if you are saved. Which I don't believe you. I don't believe that once you are baptized or you've been or repented, you are saved. That's not what the Bible teaches. Once you repent, you probably you are now on the path to salvation, but you still have to fight against the devil and you can sin at any time. Now, what he did say that is true, though, is that the Hebrews said they were quote-unquote Christians, but they just said that with their mouth, which is true, because even Jesus was talking to the Pharisees in John chapter 8, and he said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And they said, well, we have a father Abraham, and we're never slaves. And he's like, no. You have a part of the devil. So even you are considered the quote-unquote the saved people, were they really saved? No. Now, let me tell you why uh, this is a very good question she asked. If you were a Christian, or let's say you were walking according to your knowledge of God, you were walking with God. And then you stop walking with God? If you stop walking with God, then you are no longer God's friend. Yeah. 
For you to become God's friend, you have to reconnect with God. And God is not going to take anyone into his house that is not his friend. Just that we wouldn't take anybody in our house that we don't know. Right? Yes. But, we talked about, in, in the first part, we talked about the Israelites as the the battle is not about how you started, but it's how, how you finish. Okay? Don't believe anyone that tells you, oh, if you were saved when you were baptized or you repented or you got justified, then you cannot lose that salvation. Yes, you can. Life is not eternal. Only God has eternal life. Nobody else has eternal life. Okay? Now, let's talk about something. The idea that you are, you are saved not when you die, but when you believe. Let me say this to you guys. That's not a false statement. Like I mentioned earlier, you are saved at the end, not at the beginning. The Israelites the Israelites started good. They got to the land, promised land, or before the promised land, and they failed. When we look at the Bible, you will see that um, many times people talk about um, that one saved, always saved thing. But the Bible does not teach one saved, always saved. Neither that once you've been saved, or like they like to call it, you cannot lose your salvation. The Bible doesn't say that at all. People would think it says that, but it doesn't say that. Let me go through some examples with you guys quickly. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 21 to 23, um, I'm going to first read that, you know, I'm, I'm going to put the whole chapter. And you know what? Let me put the whole chapter. So the chapter, let's see. Yeah. Let me, where is it at? This one. Okay, let me put a different version. Let me put the new King James version instead. Boom. So, we're talking about verse 21 to verse 23. It's talking about persecutions. Meaning, in the time when there will be the last persecution and the end times, you could have been working with God, but if you stop working with God, you won't be saved. That was this clearly. Verse number 16, I'm not going to read verse number 16 to 20, but I'm going to speak from verse 21. And you can read it for yourself, guys. That's why I put the whole chapter for you. Now, brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father will deliver um, his child. And children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. When they persecute you into this city, flee to the other. For assuredly I say unto you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. He, actually, you know what? Let me talk to you guys. He who endures to the very end shall be saved. Not he who starts the journey. No, he who endures to the end shall be saved. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go through another one with you guys, just so you guys can know. What the Bible actually talks about. Um, 
because this is very this is very interesting. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, talking about the signs of the times of the end. Remember when the Israel the disciple asked Jesus, what is like the end of time? Jesus says on Mount Olive, as he was looking at the, the temple, what did he say? He said, guys, take heed that no one deceives you. Verse number, why did he start with, take heed that no one deceives you? Because he knows that in the land that people will be deceiving people. Telling them, oh, God, you're not saved when you die. Or at the end, you are saved at the beginning. That's deception. Why? Verse number nine. Then, now I, I hope you guys write, read everything. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many, and because lawlessness, or basically iniquity, will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end. So that means either he who endures until they are dead, like Jesus died, while he endured to the end, or like Elijah, that God took. So, when Jesus comes the second time, that's when you are saved. Saved. Because at any point before Christ come, you could have still changed your mind. You could have still walked away from God. How? Because when there's persecution, guess what? A lot of people will leave God's camp because they don't want to take the bodily pain. They will remove themselves from God because of the persecution against Christians, because they won't, be able, they won't be able to buy or sell. They might lose their job. They don't see how they're going to pay their house. Then they're going to remove their trust from God and put it into men. That's why Jesus says, he who endures to the end shall be saved. Not at the beginning, at the end, that's when you are saved. You know what? Let me go to the next one. Mark chapter 13, <laughs> verse number 12. I'm gonna, let me just go in to take the, the New King James Version as well on that part. So you guys can see the titles. Verse number 12, up to verse number 14. Yeah, ah, okay. Um, verse number 12. Now, brother will betray brother to death, and father his child. 13. And you will be hated for all, by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end, again, shall be saved. How about we go to um, I think Mark chapter 16 Okay The Great Commission Think about this Later he appealed to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, still unbelief, because they did not believe those who had sent him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized is saved. Is saved, right? No. He who believes and baptized will. Not is saved, will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. You see, you believe, justification, baptized, baptism after that, 
sanctification to go with Christ, then you will be saved if you keep walking with Christ. But if you turn away from God, how can you be saved? Exactly. Last one. Now, here's the funny part. It's not about baptism per se, it's the timing. Why is the timing the, the end, not the beginning? Perfect example. The thief on the cross. The thief on the cross, and we know that story very well, right? We know that story very well. Let me read it to you guys. Let me read that for you. Verse 39 through 40. This is about Jesus on the cross. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, Jesus Christ, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answered the him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to the just, to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. What Jesus says, Jesus said, Assuredly, I say unto you today, you, I say unto you today, comma, yeah, that was a mistake, you will be with me in paradise. This guy was living. He was was he was he not a Jew? Yes, he was a Jew. Oh, Bible doesn't say that, but uh, we assume he was a Jew. But he was one of those people that were called the promised children or the saints, the saved, right? But guess what? Was he saved? No, you are only saved at the end not at the beginning because you can start good and end bad which means you won't be saved now I'm speaking according to the Bible because I don't know who's going to be saved or not that's for God to decide but biblically speaking it's at the end the people get the reward Jesus said I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me to do to everyone that has done good or evil. It's not at the beginning you are rewarded, it's at the end. So the idea that, oh, um, if they were saved, then they cannot lose their salvation, that he said, that's deception. I'm not saying he's doing that on purpose, but that's a lie. That's a, that's a tale. That's deception. Anyway, guys, let me know, let me know what you guys think about this. If you have any questions, you can put it in the comment down comment section down below, and I will do my best to answer you as much as possible. Hey, this is again the Open Door TV. Hope to see you again.